Hey, hello, and welcome back to the Genesis Birthing and Living, Listening to Black Women web series. Today, I am going to be recounting my own birth and well, me and my husband. So I'm interviewing him and interviewing me, and we're going to answer some questions at the same time. So let's get right to it. Uh, you can introduce yourself, I guess. Well, my name is Eric Brown. I am head of this Brown family, and uh, we just had a baby. So that's what we're here to talk about. I guess we can get straight to it. <laughs> All right. So first question. All right, so how many birth stories do we have? Well, this was our fifth birth. Um, we've shared different parts of each of our birth stories, um, except the first one. We were very private about that, I think. But uh, we shared a lot about the other birth stories, and um, hopefully we'll share more. But this is number five for us. All right, all right. Yes. No okay, so why do we think that uh, telling our story is important? Why why do we want to tell our story and why do we think it's important? I want to ask specifically, you know, you specifically as a man, because I've never interviewed a dad before. Um, so why do you as a dad feel like it's important to tell um, our story? And then why do you think in general it's important to tell yours? Well, I think uh, the stories itself in general are important because it normalizes birth so that we can understand that aspect of our life. Like if you think about a, a, a person, you know, during puberty, that person is really learning a lot about themselves um, and their bodies and how it works and everything. And that's gonna really, that's gonna really affect a lot of the decisions that they make over time. Um, so as a human race, especially as an American culture, I think, I think we're in that puberty where we're learning very basic things about ourselves but these are things that have just been ignored over the commercial history of this commercial culture so now we're learning things like you know we're, we're asking hard questions about abortion and stuff and learning about how birth works and asking about uh what is sex what is love uh like all of these are extremely fundamental to human existence and we're only just now getting to them for reasons that we can talk about in another video but uh, I think this this conversation is important to have, and each time a couple or a person shares a birth story, as humans, we get more acquainted with this <laughs> this most essential process of our lives. Yeah. So why do you think it's important, particularly for dads or men, to tell their stories or to hear stories of other Man. Well, for men, I think it's important because uh, it's kind of the same reason, but just in a more nuanced group that men are even less acclimated with what birth is. Um, we're not, we're often not involved, even if we are, um, even if we are, you know, present, we, we tend to not be very involved and we don't know what's happening. We kind of like tend to be hands off with it. So I want men to become more engaged for various reasons. One, it helps the mother a lot. Um, two, it, it gives you not just a sense of pride, but a, a sense of belonging and purpose. Like you understand that there was something that I needed to do here. And were, were I not here, that might not get done. It might get done. No, it might get done in a subpar fashion. It might, you know, that someone might suffer the baby or the, or the mother. And third, the baby benefits so much because, you know, we, we have a, a little research about all the huge benefits that come from doing little things like playing music on the baby while in the womb or um, the, the effect of warm touch, you know, mother to child or the effect of starting to breastfeed and working on that latch immediately after the baby is born. And, you know, like we just learn how these things affect the baby's psyche and emotions down the road. and postpartum depression and you know the list goes on and on and we still have only tapped the surface of what these benefits are so i think that one of the benefits we haven't tapped is men connecting with their child from the moment they're born um and what happens to the child when they feel two presences not just that motherly presence but they feel two parental presences in their life from the jump i think that makes differences that we don't see yet but in time we will come to appreciate that so uh, get ahead of the curve, fellas. Like get ahead of the curve and be one who said I did it before it was cool. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for that answer. And, uh, and I think it's important for, for couples to 
you know, as the other part of this, uh, for couples to share their story because uh, one, it's a couple activity, and I think in the birth world we can get uh, really focused on the mother a lot, and uh, the dad is left out, but also just the the, the couple, you know, the two people coming together to make a child. Um, so there's mom, dad, and then there's the unit itself. You know, and so I think it's important that uh, one that we just remember that <laughs> and uh, that we tell the story from the perspective of the two. Yeah, and who knows? Yeah, and who knows what um what birth actually is if we do it the way humans were doing it before there were hospitals. I mean, I don't. I I'm assuming a lot because you have to assume a lot about prehistory, but prehistoric humans. I, I assume that there was no real reason why a man couldn't be present or, you know, actively involved. And if not actively involved, at the very least, more present than in the building, but out of the room, yeah. like we tend to do in the hospitals, you know? So who knows what birth actually is when we get, when we start to view it as a a dance yeah. between two, you know? Okay. And I want to ask you more about that a little bit later. Um, but we'll, we'll get to it. Okay. Um, so what are most birth stories like in your family? Like from the male perspective, what? Oh, from the male perspective? Yeah, from the male perspective. I mean, you can tell us what you know from your you mom's like, perspective. Okay, but from the women in my family, from my perspective. From your perspective, but also like your experience in birth, and you're talking about your birth. So what has been the the trend as far as like your dad during birth? Yeah, or other your men in friend family. Yeah, other men. Okay. Yeah. Um, so... Well, first, uh, on the women that I know about, I, I only know about my mom and sister. I don't really know about the birth stories of many other people. I might, you know, know about what they said a cousin did or something. But for the most part, everybody has their births in a hospital the traditional way. Um, and they they start to do it naturally from what I from what I know, um, I wasn't really present for any of my mom's births and um, not my sister's birth either. So um, I know my sister had planned to do a completely natural uh, pregnancy and birth. I think she ended up with the epidural at the end, at least with the first. You know, second, I'm not too sure about, but you do have their birth stories on the Genesis Birthing and Living blog, so check that out. But um, uh, I, I think from the man perspective, like we've been very, aloof you know from what i know i know my from what my mom tells me my dad wasn't uh there when i was born not because he wasn't trying to be but because he you know it was just late he was you know getting off work running here you know that type of thing and um and you know more effort could more effort have been put in probably but um uh, like i said there was no expectation um not from her and anyone else that he would be there like what for there's a doctor nurses all these people they do the work um, so that's kind of what, how men have seen it. And I think I have, um, opened eyes, at least in my own family and friends, my own circle about, about what a man's role is in birth. And I don't know if I've necessarily changed any lives, but I just, you know, show something different. And I think the more that we show something different, then we can start to have different stories there. But I think most men would have that story of, well, you know, I wasn't there my parents weren't there, my dad wasn't there, my brothers weren't there for theirs, you know, a lot of us are just out of the picture. I want to empower us to get in on that. It's just something that that's, it's, it does something for the bond to see the person born yeah. and then raise the person. Then, yeah. you know, for your wife to emerge from a cold room with a new person. Yeah. It, it, I know what it does for the kids and I don't want to get off track, but I've seen that um, when we had someone keep Sammy, while we were having Jeremiah, when he came back, there was a adjustment that had to happen and it was very abrupt because he he barely understood what was happening inside mommy's yeah. big belly, you know? So there was that curve there. And I know that that has to be at least similar for men because we you go in and there's you and then you come out and there's you and somebody else who you say is hungry and I got to feed them. So yeah. Yeah, that's kind of I don't, I don't. I think that's disconnected. I think that's a fragmented way of life, and I hope more men will have better stories in the future. Okay, so two things from what you just said. One, do you feel like consciously or subconsciously, does that narrative uh, of men in your family, your circle, you know, your church community, your friends, whatever, do you feel like that narrative um, 
uh, lended itself to you wanting to be more involved or, or do you just feel like that was something that God put on you and then you kind of looked up and like, oh, I did something different or was it like a... No, that, um, that came into my life by way of a very good thing that happened to me named my wife, Shayla Brown. Okay. She is so serious about birth and doing it right. And I've been on this journey with her, you know, ever since we had our first miscarriage. I, I can't say that, I, won't, I don't want to make it seem like I've been dragged along for this process. I, I'm very invested. And I'm very happy to be doing this. Um, but, you know, I, I, I don't think I would have thought to do this necessarily if you had just gotten pregnant and it came to me about what to do, you know. So uh, thanks for your leadership oh, is the answer okay. to that. Um, and yeah. Okay. Um, and the second thing, what do you think it does for, you know, for you and then, I mean, as, as much as you can generalize to see the process. Because like you said, so if I were to just go in the room somewhere, have a baby, and then come out, there's some stuff you missed that I just did there, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And mm -hmm. what do you think it does for, I don't know, for you, as far as your knowledge of the process, but also, I don't know, appreciation or uh, just the understanding or gro growth. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think it does to know what's happening? see what's happening and see every part of it okay. if, you know. so first let's make a distinction that uh and no not to anybody but if you only saw it then you don't you didn't learn as much from the process as you would if you were actively involved like hands-on um so if you watched it all like if i had just seen all of it happen which isn't the case for any of the births um, but if i had just watched then i'd probably be weirded out not that any anything so incredibly gross is happening, at least not to me. Like I'm not one of those can't see blood type people. Like I I cut on cadavers and stuff. So like that would have been like okay, but I don't think I would have came away. I think I would have come away with a not knowing how to connect with that experience I just had simply because all I did was see it. Like I just saw it happen. Um, the examples are limitless, but you know like. Think of the things that you've done in your life and think if you had instead just watched someone else do those things, then how would you think about that part of your life? Um, so I, I encourage hands-on active involvement. Um, and that has affected me because I've learned Shayla's body, not in a, a sexual way or even in a anatomical way, but I've learned, I've been with her as she physically experienced some of the things that, you know, like the biggest physical experiences that she's had. I, I not just learned, you know, that the vagina leads to the surface, which leads to the blah, 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 but I also learned what the ring of fire feels like and not from a book, but from grip strength. Like I, I dialed it in like, oh, 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 that's how much that hurts. You know, like, uh, or it's just her describing it, you know, not just be funny, but her describing what's happening, her asking me, can you rub here? What does it feel like? It feels hot. I feel like I got a poop. I feel like I'm, I'm about to fall out. I, you know, like all of those things, like, man, this is, this is giving birth. This is what we keep demanding that women do so that we exist. Like, this is, <laughs> this is what they're, this is what's happening. Um, and I, once you know that better, you approach the process differently. Uh, maybe for some, they would approach it, you know, uh, they would be more hesitant about having kids after that. It didn't um, cause hesitation for me. It just, I think it just, it just made me a lot more sober about what we were going into. Like when you have the discussion about, are we going to have another child? I'm not thinking like, Ooh, I don't know uh, what kind of bills or, you know, how many college funds or whatever. I'm thinking, okay. That means we got to get all these supplies again. We have to um, make smoothies every every other day so that you keep your iron up. We got to do prenatals. We got to have uh, this equipment. We got to have a, a venue. So where are we going to live and where are we going to have this baby? Um, we got, of course, we got to have rooms in the house and all that stuff that comes after the baby is born. But knowing what happens during the birth just changes it or it adds to the list of questions those very sobering questions that you ask when you want to have another child. Um, but it also just lends, uh, lends to the experience. Like it just makes it a richer experience because I was, like I said, I, I didn't just watch a birth happen. I don't, I don't just know that the birth happened and you know, now I have a baby. When she talks about the birth of 
any of our children I can talk to because I was there. You know what I mean? So like that's that's a story that we both have. Um, so that, you know, that that's just a part of our life, our, our family life that I'm not closed out of. Um, the equivalent would be, I, I wish I could take you to work with me. You know what I mean? Like if men could take their, their families to work with them every day and let their families see the drudge, like the every day, launch again, boss who don't really like me again. Like if they could actually see what you're going through every day, there would be more appreciation, but they don't see it. And if even if they saw it, they're not experiencing it. They don't feel how your heart races when you, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make an example, but when you really get involved, then you know exactly what's happening. And if I ask her to do it again, then I, I know how, how best to support and make sure that that's happening correctly. And I just have a richer story to tell about the birth of my children. I can tell how I caught them with this hand. I caught him with this hand with a cast on, you know, like all that kind of stuff. So, okay. So, um, how can, you know, how can it, let's say there's a woman and she's wanting her uh, husband to be more involved and he's wanting to be more involved, but neither of them know how to like navigate that process. What advice would you give wives, um, uh, in assisting their husband in assisting them? If that makes sense. That's, uh, that's a big question. Oh. <laughs> um, I would say show them this video and all of the content on Genesis okay. Birthing and Living uh, blog and website because that could be, you know, that could change things around. Um, and then just let them know, just be honest about what you need. I think this is really a key for like everything in life, especially in family. Like we got to get better about communicating what we actually need, but that requires us to get better about communicating with ourselves. So when you're saying, well, he not doing this, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes you really need to slow down, dial it back and say, what am I feeling? I feel abandoned. I feel unappreciated. I'm to going through all this physical strain to have a baby for us and you're not involved. I feel, um, you know, like whatever it might be for you, I can't speak to, I, I've never been through it. So I don't know what a woman's feeling during that time, especially in that situation. But if that's what's happening for you, like really try to dial it back, take some time by yourself, maybe even journal, maybe even pray, um, maybe even talk with a trusted mentor, not just somebody older than you who did this before. Because unfortunately, those two criteria are not enough to make sure that they are actually supporting you into something positive. But a trusted mentor who will tell you or help you talk through your feelings and help you understand what you're feeling. Um, maybe even help you frame words. But <clears throat> I, I think it's best if it comes from your own heart if you just really take the time to say what you're feeling yeah. and and to let him know the benefit of him being there. Like if if I had you there, then not only would I feel these things, baby would be safer in these ways. Um, let them know what the doctor and the nurse might do to you. you know, let them know that I might have somebody doing something in a special part of my body that yeah. I don't want him doing if you're not there. If that don't motivate him. <laughs> Y'all got some little talks to have, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I was second what you were saying about uh, communicating with yourself first and getting a handle on what you feel. Uh, because sometimes <laughs> sometimes your feelings are sometimes they're warranted yeah. so. sometimes they're not okay our kids woke up from that so we have to take a minute but um i was saying to second you know communicating your feelings to yourself because sometimes they're warranted sometimes they're residue of old trauma or whatever and maybe your partner is you know maybe your husband is doing things that remind you of you know your trauma so like for me i had to be like i don't really like being vulnerable you know what i mean and so it was hard it's it's hard to accept him help helping sometimes because i just don't like the way it feels to need somebody to help you or to even have to communicate what i need that's a whole nother post for a whole nother time but yeah so identifying identifying how you feel and then you know kind of talk to yourself about how many of those feelings are real, how many are deception, um, how many you can get remedied, you know, like, well, if I don't feel like he don't help me, maybe I can communicate that. Or if I really feel like I need help, let me figure out a way to communicate that. And if he flips out, which is the worst case scenario, then okay, we'll deal with that then. 
but maybe he won't flip out. Maybe he'll just help me. You maybe know what I mean? he'll have the international <laughs> blank man stare. Right. Maybe he won't say nothing at all. And he'll be oh, like, well, I don't really know what you mean, help, what you need. And then now we're going to figure out what we need. I don't, you know. Uh, food then. Right. That's probably what it's like, food then. <laughs> right. So, um. Okay. All right, so you say you have five births. How old are the children? How close are these births been together? Um, no more than a year and a half apart. I think the, old, the biggest space was 20 months or something like that. But we have a five-year-old, a four-year-old, a three-year-old, this one-year-old who will be two in March, and a newborn. Yeah, so... I, I, and ironically, I, this means nothing, but their birth dates are the 27th, the 21st, the 24th, the 21st, the 27th. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. 27, 21, 24, 21, 27. Guess that's how our ovulation cycle is set up or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so and I think it does help to having them so close together, you know, it's just like we don't have to get out of rhythm uh, as much, you know, to, when we go into the next birth. So, okay, so you've experienced home birth, natural birth. Okay, we talked about that a little bit. Um, all right, you say you identify as Christian. Yeah. Prove it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so how does that inform this whole natural birth process? Or does, or does that have to do have anything to do with anything? Or is your Christianity over here on Sunday? And then when you go to birth, that ain't got nothing to do with that. No, I try to take Jesus with me everywhere I go. Um, and it does make a difference. I don't um I don't think we're at the place yet where we think to call it Christian birthing, but I do very much feel that that's what it is. Um, without going too deep to answer this question, God made everything. Creation is God's handiwork. The only thing outside of creation is the triune God. Okay? Um, that's my theology. That's what salvation and me have been worked out. So, since the only thing outside creation is the triune God, the only thing supernatural is God. Everything else, all the other powers, even the ones that God tends to use on us, are natural powers. He gets mad at Pharaoh, locusts and frogs and water turning blood and all that. He want to help Elijah, fire from heaven. He want to, you know, like every time he was ready to help or hurt somebody, he always, for some reason, he picks up nature and starts using it. He picks up nature and starts using it. I think, hey, can you do it, please? Uh, he picks up nature and starts using it, so that's the most the most power that we have access to. Until you know, he lets us be part of the triune God, which he won't. So, the natural birth is very much honoring God's creation by doing things the way that He designed them to be in the very first place. That's what our birth philosophy is, um, and it is very much rooted in our faith because we. I can't speak for you, but I do think we both firmly believe that. God's creation and his design is not only the highest and best way of doing things, but it should be God's people's obligation to make sure that this earth is being governed according to the natural laws that it was created under. Oh, that's a lot of words. I think the way God put it was, tend the garden, keep the garden. He told Adam to keep the garden. What does keep mean? To preserve, maintain, continue, sustain. He told him to keep it going like this, bro. So, like, that's that was the first thing. We, well, next to, you know, be fruitful and multiply. Like, that was the first thing we were told to do. And we've gotten, we're, we're serious about all the other stuff. Oh, we watch a preacher preach about tired. But when are we going to stand up and say, no, we're going to do birth the natural way. We're going to get money the natural way. We're not going to make, make up all these. New, when are we going to uh, hold earth to the standards that it was created under? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm done preaching, but yes, my faith is Christian. I, I follow Yeshua being yourself, son of God and the Virgin Mary. And uh, he was there at the very beginning when God created creation. He knew what he was doing and I trust him so much that whenever we can see, we follow his order. Yeah, yeah. and to add to that, um, it also helps, I know, me, maybe both of us, I'm sure, um, 
quit blazing a trail, you know, because like you said, you weren't, you know, you don't have like a legacy of men being present at birth and all of that, doing home birth. I don't have uh, this, you know, legacy of people being at home, having births, you know, so when we first started, people, people thought we were crazy. Okay. Good people. Right, the ones right. That love we love, right. Not, not them, good people. Right, they thought we were nuts. Like, what is wrong with you? Why would you want to do this? Somebody going to die. Why would you, you know? But that's all fear, right? And again, we haven't been given a spirit of fear, but of power and of, a, and of love and of a sound mind, right? And if, one, if God has told us to do it this way, you know, that's just, why not? But two, when we think about the sound mind part, I mean, this is very logical, okay? When you go to the hospital, this happens. We're not going to the hospital. Um, you, you're, it's like your body works in what way? Like this is the anatomy of it. This is the physiology of it. It's, I mean, it's not like we're just hopping off of a, a you know, off of a, a, a unicorn. And it's like, oh, we're gonna birth naturally, and there's nothing logic about it. Um, it's it, God's way is scientific as well as spiritual. So, um, so yeah, just the faith to keep doing it, even as people are not seeing why you're doing it. But now it's a flip. This baby, people are like, oh, it's, just, it's inspiring. Like, Show us. Right, right, right. And that's what you want. And we're glad, yeah. Right, right. And that's what you want, you know, because it's all, it's not about us. It's to glorify God and to make this point that this is the way God wants us to do it. There's less trauma for you. There is more of a connection built for you and your family. Um, and yeah. Yeah, so that's a good point that it's a scientific decision that we made too. Like, Yes, it's very much rooted in our faith. Yeah. That is the root, the yeah. basis for why we made the decision. But we didn't just get this out of scripture. We didn't read a few scriptures yeah. and you know, have a Bible study and decide we're going to have all our babies at home. Right. Like we actually researched this. She's trained to be a midwife. She is a certified oh. doula. Yeah. I've done med school. <laughs> now, we, ain't, we ain't got enough credentials to open nothing up. Right. But we know <laughs> what we're talking about, okay? Right. So um, I just want to throw that out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> That's important. All right. So, last two questions are: What were some high points of um, the birth experience for you, and the summer point? Um. So I'll start with the low points. So we can handle high points. <laughs> okay. The lowest point of all the birth experiences for me was missing Messiah's birth. Um. And in time, as we continue to minister to families, I'm sure you'll learn that story. Yeah. But um, uh, just I just I wish I had been there. Like that's that's the stain on my my record as a birthing father um and i also i also yeah that's where i get my philosophy about how important it is to be there at the very beginning um so that's my my biggest low point other than that was just um the fact that you know the fact that we were so busy during the first, the middle three births the second third and fourth births um we were in arizona living alone i was in med school I was like all over the place. And I was still, I was still there for my wife and actively involved in the birth more than men with tons of time and tons of support. And you know, like I'm still, I'm still overall proud of what I was able to accomplish with those, with most of those births. But um, I was just so busy that I feel if I had been more zoned in then the types of experiences we've had for our last two births, could have been the second and third births, and then who knows what we could have experienced with David and um, EJ. So uh, yeah, just the, how busy I was, or how where I prioritized this, that's what I should say. Because no matter how what else I have to do, if this comes first, then you know other things in life would have to change for that. Um, and like I said, I wasn't I wasn't out of the picture or anything like that. Just I wish I had been more involved, um, more, even more actively involved throughout the pregnancy, you know, with doing the, um, the monitoring um, and just helping to put Shayla at ease about home birth, unassisted birth. We did that for our last two. We could have did that for all of them. I was not ready. Yeah, she wasn't ready, but also I wasn't, um, I wasn't giving the level of support that would help her be ready. You know, so I was doing enough and I was doing more than most people. And that's what I was playing in my head. Are you doing enough? You're doing more than most people. When there was still more I could be done, that could be done. And um, one of one of my mentors, I'll call him that from now on, um, high school principal, Mr. McIntosh, Pierce McIntosh, wherever you at, thank you, bro. He said, um, if better is possible, 
too good is not enough. And I was doing good, but better was definitely possible. So I wish I had gave more, you know, who knows what could have came to that. High points, though, great place to end, high points. Um, the highest point were the last two, uh, catching my fourth and fifth son, like actually delivering the baby, for people who don't know what catching means. Like, that's, that was, that's the highest point of all. I love the fact that I can say, I brought you into this world. Like, I literally, yeah, you are here now because of me. Like, the first person that you touched, if you don't want to count the birth canal, is me. You know, I like that. Um, other high points is that all of my children are so healthy. And, of course, that's a blessing that I don't take credit for. All glory belongs to God for that. But with that being said, God does a lot of what he does by instructing his people. You know, like a lot of his blessings in our life come from his instructions to us. And if we follow those instructions, we get to uh, uh, see the benefit and the blessing. I think the fact that my children are not just healthy, not just like not sick, but they're so healthy. Like they, they have skin that everyone comments on. Everyone says, this skin glows so much. They're, they're so smart. They're so emotionally calm. They, they sleep so well. Like they, our kids go, they rise and fall with the sun. But that's because we've been very intentional about their circadian rhythm and making them go to bed no less than an hour after the sun goes down. Like we've, we've been so, um, so closely attached to everything that we feel God has instructed us to do that I think the benefits, I would just be all day listening. You know what I mean? But the biggest ones are how smart they are, how calm they are, and how good they look. Like they're, they're very, very good looking boys. Um, I think that is directly related to the decisions that we made. And that is the thing that I'm proudest about. I, I feel like we have a county fair for kids. I got the best in show, you know? <laughs> That's how we should feel. I know, but, it, but it's actually true. Though. <laughs> Okay, well, um, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Um, I, I, I pray this is gonna bless a lot of people. We, had, we got a lot, of, uh, a lot of really positive feedback as we were sharing our um, birthing story this last time. Thank y'all so In much. real time, you know, yeah, on social media. So yeah, thank you guys. Um, so I pray that this is a continuation of, of that blessing. You know, if there is more that you wanna ask us or that you wanna know, Please comment below, um, share this video, uh, because again, it we have been really, really blessed by this whole experience. But we realize now that uh, um, that is is to glorify God, you know, and and His way of doing things because He loves us and because this is the way He wants us to do it because it is the most beneficial for us and for our people, for His people. As you know, African American families suffer these horrible statistics when it comes to birth. And we believe that this is partially why, you know, um, we're in a very hostile environment when we go and submit ourselves to hospitals. So the more that we can share about how to not need that and how to not depend on it, and how to build other uh, structures, other institutions, other ways of doing this, um, the more uh, control we have of our outcomes, the more positive outcomes we can have. That, like you said, trickle down into the types of children we have. And, um, how many, how many uh, dysfunctions we have to deal with as a family, how many more stresses we have to deal with, health issues of children, health issues of the mother, and infant mortality and maternal mortality after the birth is long gone, you know? So, um, so yes, thank you for yeah. joining me. And ultimately it leads to the uh, quality of adults that we have in the world. Yes. So we're yeah. doing this for the kingdom, for the culture, and for you. So please do let us know. Reach out to us in any way you can. Hit us in the DM. Email us. If you find my phone number, lose it. But <laughs> any other way, you you know, like, let me know something. Hit me up, for real. Like, we really want to hear yeah. from you. That is the most rewarding part of this, yeah. of, of all this, is to know that the sacrifices we make aren't wasted, that they are benefiting somebody. So please, yeah. please let us know. And, um, yeah, yeah, without further ado. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so this has been the Listening to Black Women, man, um, <laughs> web series. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Again, like, subscribe, comment, share. And we'll see you guys next time.